Now, what you have in this little book barely scratches the surface of what Presbyterian mission is. Presbyterian mission is miraculous. And I'm going to tell you just a couple of little stories about the miracle of mission so that you will have a sense of an immediate connection to that other side of your envelope and you will give to it with wonderful joy and generosity. There's a little village in the African nation of Malawi. A tiny village in between Bendawi and Ekwendeni. There's only about 300 people living in that village, mostly members of two or three extended families. And in that village, there's a little girl who's eight years old. And every morning at sunrise, before she has had her meager breakfast, she picks up a steel pot that has been passed down through several generations of her family. And she begins to walk. She can barely carry this pot when it is empty. She's going to walk a little more than three kilometers. And when she gets there, she's going to fill this steel pot from a tiny river that runs with water that is not quite clean. She's going to fill it up. And then she's going to drag that pot of water three kilometers back to her family's home. That's going to be all the water they have throughout most of that day for washing for cooking, for cleaning, for drinking. And then late in the afternoon, the little eight-year-old girl will take the empty pot and walk the three kilometers again and then walk back with it filled up. Because of that, she can't go to school. She can't help her mother with the garden that feeds them. She can't spend time with her brothers and sisters because the water is dirty and that little town dysentery is still a problem. And when someone is sick, there is not clean water for their most basic needs. But then one day last year, a miracle happened there. A team of missionaries with engineers came from the Presbyterian Church in Canada and after examining the land, they drilled a well, a deep bore hole. It cost about $4,000, but its construction is simple. It will last for 30 years. And now instead of walking a round trip of six kilometers, twice a day, that little girl has a pump in the middle of the village which produces nearly unlimited clean water. Because of that, she can go to school, she can spend time with her brothers and sisters, she helps her mother with the little farm that they run. Her life has been miraculously changed and her future has become incredibly brighter. And that's one tiny project of Presbyterian, uh, Presbyterian's sharing that you have maintained. Another story, in the roughest part of downtown Winnipeg, there's a 13-year-old boy. He doesn't know his father because his father abandoned him and his mother and his siblings when he was just a baby. In order to support the family, his mother works at two jobs. She is never at home. And so after school, this 13-year-old boy roams the streets. But he's a big boy, and he's a strong boy, and very quickly, he attracts the attention of one of the local gangs and they see him as a great potential member and they welcome him into their gang. And he sees the gang as a place where he will have acceptance, a new family, 
Securing? Of course they will force him to steal and to fight. They will drive him into a life of drug addiction and alcoholism. But it's the only thing that's there for him. And he is drawn to it. But then one day as he is wandering the streets after school with no home or family to go to, somebody says to him, you know a couple of blocks over there's a little building and it's called Flora House. And they have a program there, an after school program, where you can be with other people and they will even give you food to eat. And he's kind of hungry. And so this big gangly boy who is destined for a life in a downtown gang in Winnipeg, he shows up at the door of Flora House. with love and with friendship. And he sits through the silly old Bible study so that he can have something to eat. And he is loved. And all of a sudden he realizes, I have an option apart from joining a gang. I have a future that's so much brighter and better for that. And his story is like the story of hundreds of other kids who would have ended up on the street, but because Presbyterians sharing supports the Reverend Margaret Mullen in Flora House, there's an option. You did that for that boy and so many others because your heart and soul is in the church and you have heard Jesus say, for as much as you have done it under the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you have done it to me. In a tiny village in the north of India, there is a 20-year-old woman, and she's pregnant. And she knows that there is some complication with her pregnancy. It isn't going right. But there's no hope for her. There's no hospital for her, because in that part of India, even though the caste system has long been abolished, it still has power, and it so happens that she was born into a tribe of people called the Beel people. And as far as the caste system is concerned, the Beels are beneath contempt. They are untouchables. They are considered to be savages. Nobody will provide any help or any service for the Beals. They are mocked and degraded. The members of the other castes refer to them as the monkey people. She knows that she will lose the baby. She knows that she will die. She accepts it. She is untouchable. Until someone says to her, you know, there is a hospital in the village of Jobat. And in that hospital, they open their arms. And they receive all people as precious, beloved children of one Creator God. 